from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. George Reed here. Oh, hi, George. How are things at Floyd's of England? Very good, as a matter of fact. Very good. Well, now, it can't all be good or you wouldn't be calling me. Well, to tell the truth, I do have a small problem. Figures. No, figure is the word singular. Huh? A small figure, a statuette belonging to Mrs. Dora Harkness Ballin down in New York. Ballin? Yes, terribly wealthy, but a real eccentric. So what's happened? The little statue I mentioned, it's gone, disappeared. Oh, what's it worth? Insured value is twenty six fifty. Wow. Uh, twenty six dollars and fifty cents. Huh? Twenty six bucks and a half wouldn't even cover my expense account. Well, it just happens that she carries hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of personal property insurance with us. But for some reason or other, she attaches particular value to this statuette. Oh, I get it. You're afraid that if we don't go through the motions of trying to find it, she might take her insurance elsewhere. Precisely. Real important to you, huh? Very. Then I take it I won't have to be chintzy with the old expense account. Uh, well, now, Johnny... Okay, George, I'll be in touch. Bob Bailey in the intriguing adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Floyd's of England, North American office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the doting dowager matter. Expense account item one, seven ninety, taxi, train fare, and incidentals, Hartford to New York. Item two, a dollar even for a cab from Grand Central Station to the address of Mrs. Dora Harkness Ballon over on East 73rd Street. It turned out to be one of New York's famous old brownstone houses, well preserved and reeking of an era long gone by. A uniformed butler rushed me into a large, high-ceiling drawing room, and I could hardly believe my eyes. Ornate pre-Victorian furnishings, heavy red velvet draperies, huge lamps and crystal chandeliers, oil paintings all over the place, and gilded mirrors. Pretty fabulous. If you will be kind enough to wait here, Mr. Dollar, I shall tell Mrs. Ballon that you have arrived. Thank you. I know that she'll want to see you. Oh, excuse me, Master Harold. It's all right, Higgins. Uh, has the uh, the mail come? Uh, would you like me to check, sir? Uh, yes, good idea. Uh, you know how Aunt Dora likes to see it the minute it gets here. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, the mail. The dear old common everyday mail. Uh, you're uh, here to see Mrs. Ballon? That's right. I'm Johnny Dollar. I'm Hal Winters, her nephew. Hi. Uh, say, tell me something. Yes? About this little statue that's missing. You mean that little chunk of pot metal that's disappeared? Oh, is that what it is? Oh, yes, just a piece of junk... But a couple of months ago, Aunt Dora decided it looked like her grandfather when he was a general back in the Civil War. Oh? Why does she value it so highly? I expect the general was the only Ballon who had guts enough to do anything on his own. What do you mean? I mean, instead of just living off the family shipping fortune. So when she suddenly decided the statue looked like the general, uh, Johnny Dollar, did you say? That's right. The insurance investigator? Yes. Well, now, why should she bother you with it? I don't know. Uh, Truly, Mr. Dollar, it's not worth it. If I were you, I'd forget it. Uh, Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd better see if the morning mail has arrived. Hal, uh, just when did the statue disappear and from where? Uh, Tana discovered it missing from the reception room yesterday morning. Now, if you'll pardon me... Was the house broken into? Possibly, but there was no sign of it. How about guests? No, we haven't had guests for a week or more. How many servants are there? Uh, Mr. Dollar, perhaps there's something I'd better tell you about that statue. The statue of the general? I tell you, Mr. Dollar, you are Mr. Dollar, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. I tell you that if you don't find out who stole it and get it back, I'll cancel every bit of my insurance. Sit down. Thank you. Harold, my dear, ring for Higgins and have him see if the morning mail has come. 
I was about to go out and look for it myself, Tata. Let Higgins do it. It's quite all right. I don't mind. I said let Higgins do it. Well, I... All right. But if you'll excuse me now... Oh? Why? Why, I'd like to go up to my room for a moment. To call up that... That girlfriend of yours again? <laughs> Sit down. Yes, Tonda. You and that girl, that Nancy Gavin. She'd like to take you away from me, wouldn't she? Aunt Dora. Where would you go? What would you live on? And what would I do? Darling, I hardly think this is the proper Much as time. I like Nancy Gavin, I see no reason why I should let her take you away from me. Do you? Uh, I... Uh, uh, Mrs. Ballin, uh, about the statue. Huh? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Mr. Dollar, you are to leave no stone unturned. Well, now tell me... Uh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. Oh, Higgins, why do you sneak in on us this way? Well, what is it? The mail just arrived, and knowing you'd want to see it... Give it to Harold. Uh, uh, yes, here, I'll take care of it. Uh, well? What letter? Uh, no postmark. But? And it's so badly scrawled in pencil. Well, well don't bother Aunt Dora with it now. Uh, but it's marked personal, sir. Well, then let me have it. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Tonta. You may go now, Higgins. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, here, Tonta, uh, suppose you let me see what it's all about. Be quiet, Harold. Now, Mr. Dollar. Well, uh, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like you to tell me... Oh, what's the matter, Mrs. Ballin? Uh, Aunt Dora, what is it? This... This letter. Yes? It's... It's a ransom note. Ransom? For the return of the statuette, the general. They want $75,000. What? of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. This, this letter, Mr. Dollar... Maybe you'd better let me see it, Mrs. Ballin. It's a ransom note demanding $75,000 for the return of my statuette of the general. $75,000? Yes, Harold. Oh, they can't be serious. For well, that little piece of pot metal? Sure, they must be out of their minds. I beg your pardon. What? That statue means everything to me. It happens to be a memento of my grandfather, the famous General Horace Harkness Ballon. At least, it looks like him. But good heavens, Aunt Dora, 75,000. Oh? Do you object because it will mean that much less for you when I die, Harold? Of course not. I wasn't even thinking of such a thing. Well, don't. At your age, with your lack of experience in getting along on your own, money like that would only do you harm. Would it? Yes. You'd probably leave me, strike out on your own, perhaps even marry, and heaven only knows what would happen. Mrs. Ballin, are you really serious about paying this, this ransom? I have the money. I have it right here in the safe. And if it will bring back the general... Look, why don't you let me see what I can do about it first? And have it destroyed... Destroy. Well, here, read the letter. It was the usual sort of thing, poorly written on cheap paper and scribbled in pencil. And it simply said that the money in unmarked bills was to be turned over to her nephew, Harold. That instructions for its delivery would be given to him later, secretly. That if he then divulged the place and manner in which he was to make the payment, his life would be in danger. Don't you see, Mr. Dollar? If we don't do as they say, they might kill him. It further said that if the police were brought in, the statue would be destroyed. I have no choice, Mr. Dollar. I'll pay the ransom. Tonta. Harold, you will take it to them, whoever they are, when you receive their instructions. Well, they, they've threatened me. Only if we don't obey instructions. All right, now look, Mrs. Ballin. Yes, Tonta, listen to Mr. Dollar. I have told you I must have the general back at any cost. Very well. No one is to leave this house, except Harold, of course, when he is told to by the, the kidnapper. Mrs. Ballin, I won't let you do this. You what? It's utter nonsense for you to consider paying out that kind of money for a cheap little Chief. piece of junk that can't possibly be worth anything to whoever took it, except perhaps for its effect on you. I told you, young man, it's the one priceless memento I have of the great General Ballin. Yeah, you told me. Very well. 
You are here on my orders, are you not? Well, yes. All right. Then you will remain subject to my orders. Very well, now. Hi, Hello. everybody. Nancy. Well, what's everybody looking so glum about? Hi, sweetie. Nancy, Hello, Mrs. Bowen. Miss Gavin? Uh, Mr. Dollar, this is Nancy Gavin, a, a friend of Harold. Johnny Dollar? Hi. Hey, I know about you. Nancy, dear. You come to find that whatchamacallit that Mrs. Bowen lost? It was stolen. Okay, stolen. And the, the kidnappers are demanding $75,000 ransom. That's easy. Pay it. I shall. And Nancy, you are to stay right here in this house until this whole thing is over with. Auntie, I don't mind that a bit. Do we, Hal? Forward, wench. Seriously, Auntie, when are you going to let Hal marry me? Get out on his own. And leave me? Do you think for one minute that my precious Harold would do that? Why don't you answer that, Hal? Mr. Dollar, this is none of your business. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the reason for your being here. You know something, Mrs. Ballon? I'm beginning to think you're wrong. You came here to find the statue that was stolen from me. That's right. And maybe I'm on the track of it now. So how about it, Hal? Would you leave your aunt if you could? It was a wild guess, but the more I thought about it, the more I decided that Harold Winters' answer might solve this case for me. Yeah, and that Mrs. Ballon would be pretty shocked when I put my finger on the thief, the writer of that ransom note. But you know something? I was dead wrong. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the doting Dowager matter. Mr. Dollar, this is none of your business. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the reason for your being here. You know something, Mrs. Ballon? I'm beginning to think you're wrong. So answer the question, Hal. Would you leave your aunt if you could? Yes. Yes, I would. What? You bet he would, Aunt Dora. You know he would. If you'd just break down and admit he's no longer a child to be tied to your apron string. Nancy. Give him a break and enough money to get by for a week or two and he'll show you. Don't you want him to amount to anything? Of course I do. Well, he can't as long as you keep him tied up to you this way. But he needs me. Does he? Maybe he needs somebody like me. Somebody who loves him and will help him get somewhere. Help him to accomplish the things he can accomplish. You do love him, don't you? You bet I do. But so do I. And he loves me. He'd love you a lot more if he weren't so tied down to you. Harold? It's true, Aunt Dora. I never knew you even thought about leaving me. About going out on your own, as you put it. Because you never gave me a chance. Because you never thought of anyone but yourself. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar. What? I mean that you've had to become involved in a family fight. Well, I'm not. Because now I think I know where to look for that statuette. Oh? Well, I uh, wish you luck. Uh, come, Nancy, I want to talk to you. Sure, honey, I want to talk to you. Now, wait just a minute. No, Mr. Dollar, let them go. Yeah, because but... I want to talk to you. Now, look, isn't it pretty obvious? I knew that something was wrong when I first got here. Hal hadn't known you were going to call me in. I So that didn't. when he saw me here... You didn't? No. It was my kind, thoughtful butler Higgins who called your insurance company. And he shouldn't have... The fact remains that when Hal saw me here, he tried to stop that ransom note he'd planted in your mail. Oh, now, wait, Now, please. about that ransom note. It was badly written, much too badly written, by someone who was trying to hide his identity. I'll wager that paper it was scribbled on came from right here in this house. Probably. And I'll bet that if I accuse him of it, Hal will break down and admit that he wrote it. Wait, Mr. Dollar. Yeah? I devoted many years to the care and upbringing of my nephew. I realize that. In the hope that he would someday go out on his own. 
accomplish something himself. Well, now listen. I know. Perhaps over the years I made him too dependent I'd on me. I'd say yes to that. But that's because I am as I am and I can't change. But I kept hoping that he would change. That somehow, sometime, he would make just one desperate move to break away from me. But it would have to be of his own doing. So? For years, people have called me eccentric. And I've enjoyed the reputation. So I made a fuss over that cheap little statuette that I picked up in Coney Island one time as a child. Huh? Of course. That was the only sentimental value it had. But according to Harold... Oh, now, should I have picked one of the valuable artworks, paintings or sculptures that I really care about in my selfish way for this little experiment? So you gave the worthless statuette the big builder? Yes, and he fell for it. He believed that if it was stolen, I'd give almost anything to get it back. And then finally, he got up enough nerve to do something about it. Now, just a minute, just a minute. What you're telling me is that you're tickled pink that you've made a thief out of him. I'm tickled pink that he's finally shown some guts and gumption. And you can't call him a thief over that piece of junk. But it has a price of 75000 on it. That's what he'll be stealing if you give him that money and let him walk out of here with it. No, no, he won't. What else can you call it? I like to be eccentric, remember? Oh, Mrs. Ballard. So the note I'll enclose with it, you know, when he tells me he's received instructions about where and how it's to be delivered. What note? In it, I'll say, dear Harold, the best of luck to you and Nancy. I hope you'll be tremendously happy. And I hope that now and then you'll drop in on your loving and now somewhat lonesome Aunt Dora. I see. Oh, and I think I'll enclose a few extra thousand, just in case. And it's a kind of extra wedding present. Extra wedding present? Of course. The statuette. I certainly don't want them to bring that atrocity back here. Oh, no. Well, don't you? Uh... Wait. Uh, yes, dear? I, uh, I just wondered if Mr. Dollar has decided how he wants to proceed with his investigation. Well, Mr. Dollar? How... After getting what information I could from your aunt, what little information I could... Yes? Al, I've decided to give up the case. Yes, Harold. You may as well show Mr. Dollar to the door. Whatever you say, Tonto. Yeah. Goodbye, Mrs. Ballin. Oh, and maybe you'd better phone the insurance company about the extra fee I'm to get on this case. Oh, I did. Right after Higgins told me he'd called them. But if he's giving up the case, dear... Show him to the door, Harold. Uh, yes. This way, Mr. Dollar. Yeah. Thanks. Now you listen, Hal. I can tell by your look that you've learned something, Mr. Dollar. I have. Perhaps even more than I know. So, look here. Huh? Do you think this will do for the sequel to the ransom note? What? You know, the instructions about where I'm to take the money. Oh, now, wait a minute. You mean to say... You mean you knew... Are you kidding? That's why I tried to discourage you in the beginning. But will somebody please tell me? Tell me why? Tata, just being herself. You don't think for a minute she'd have just handed me the money, would have admitted she wants Nancy and me to get hitched. Don't you see? That would spoil her reputation for being an eccentric. Oh, and if you like, I'll send you the statuette when this is all over, as a souvenir. Well, I'll be. Believe me, I've handled some pretty wanky cases over the years, but this was by long odds the wankiest. And yet, why complain when it's a good living? Expense account total, including all the incidentals I could think of, and fare back to Hartford. What? $17.80. Tommy. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, well, if you've ever read the personal columns of your newspaper, you'll surely want to hear it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Your 
Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Eleanor Audley, G. Stanley Jones, Eric Snowden, and Sam Edwards. Be sure to join us next week.